Praise the Lord. Amen. Without delay, we can all understand that when we turn to the book of Psalms, just one verse. The book of Psalms, chapter 16. Verse 11. Chapter 16, verse 11. Thou will show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Um. Brother Bienvenu, please put your prayer. <coughs> Seigneur Dieu, notre cœur, nous te sommes infiniment reconnaissants. Nous nous sommes grateful to thee pour ton amour envers nos Seigneurs. Yes, my Lord, pour nous. Tu nous as ramenés dans cet endroit. Yes. Nous n'avons pas de respect, Seigneur, pas pour ces verres bois, non pas pour ces ancêtres, mais de ta parole, Dieu. Yes. Seigneur, ta parole dit. Lord, thy word said, l'homme ne fut pas seulement du pain, même sa langue dit Babel à l'homme, mais de toute parution de ta bouche, Seigneur. Et nous voulons ta parole, Seigneur. Seigneur, nous voulons ta parole, Seigneur. Lord, we just went to the word, nous croyons que dans ta parole, il y a la vie, Seigneur. Amen. Thy word is life, Seigneur. Transmets-nous la vie qui contient dans ta parole, Seigneur. Lord, transmets the life who is alive, Seigneur. Lord, transmets la vie qui contient dans ta parole, Seigneur. Lord, transmets the life who is alive, Seigneur. Lord, transmets the life who is alive, Seigneur. On your words. Nous voulons vivre cette parole, Seigneur. Nous voulons vivre cette parole, Seigneur. Où est-ce que tu vas utiliser, Seigneur Dieu? Seigneur, tu vas utiliser, Seigneur Dieu. Send them to the Minister of God. Seigneur, il veut tout passer humain, Seigneur. Yes. And cast out any human thoughts. C'est seulement ce que ta parole se puisse régner, Seigneur. Only thy word may reign. Nous voulons écouter cette parole, Seigneur. Yes. Nous voulons laisser nous la voir. Commune-nous du début à la fin. Yes. Car nous voulons te voir à l'heure. Amen. Amen. Quand tes enfants se réunissent, Seigneur, mais n'est pas content, Seigneur. Quand tes enfants se réunissent, Seigneur, mais n'est pas content, Seigneur. Il vient avec des dérangements, des distractions. Destruction. You may be safe. We want to speak on a little subject. And the title is The Path of Life. Path of life, and we read uh, Psalm 16, verse 11. Thou will show me the path of life, and in the presence is fullness of joy, and at the right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Now, Psalm 16. We know that Psalms were Psalms. Amen. Psalms that David and another singer, Azaf, Asaf, were singing. And both of them were prophets. If you go into the book of Chronicles over there, you're going to say, oh, they were praising the Lord with the sons of prophet Azar. He was also a prophet. David, as we also know, was a prophet. Amen. Amen. And not all sons, not all sons were prophetic. Not all of them. <laughs> But some of the Psalms are called Messianic Psalms. 
which were prophetic. And Psalm 16 is one of them, which we have read. So it's a prophetic, it's a messianic psalm, which means that normally David inspired his singing, but it was not him. It was the Spirit of God inspiring him and he was singing, <laughs> saying things about Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> so Psalm 15 is one of the Messianic Psalms. But let's start from the beginning just to, for us to, thank you very much, just for us to uh, plunge into the depth of the message. Or maybe as a foundation. Preserve me, O oh God, for in thee do I put my trust. Now please, I want you to know here, David is singing, but normally it's not David. This is the spirit of Christ in him. And normally, what we are reading here is what Jesus, the man, was actually saying to God. Because Jesus was also a servant of God. Amen. Amen. Jesus, and as a man, he had to serve God. So here, because it's a messianic uh, psalm, you take every word as if Jesus, the man, the servant, is speaking to God. That's exactly how it's happening. Now, somebody can say, well, we can just go there. Even where he says, oh, Lord, brother, don't be complicated. Jesus, the man, is speaking to God. Amen. You know one scripture which says also, the Lord said to my Lord. Amen. You know it. Even Jesus referring to God as a Lord. Amen. But yet we know, according to Revelation, Jesus himself was the Lord. Amen. 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 He was actually God. Now, whenever we are not like Pentecostal, we understand God's word correctly by God's grace. Amen. Whenever we speak about God, it's always somebody we can never see. Mm -hmm. in God in his invisibility. Mm -hmm. That's who we refer to as God. Mm -hmm. But when he takes a form of appearance to appear, he becomes the Lord. He becomes the Lord. Amen. So preserve me, O God, for in thee do I put my trust. So even Jesus had a God. Jesus, the man, had a God. Amen. Do you believe in that? Amen. Yes. In John chapter 20, when he was given the commission, he says, As the Father sent me, so send I you. I think in some way he spoke to the woman after the resurrection. That go to my brethren. And also he said there, my, my God and your God. You know, because we don't want to go into this, but Jesus the man had a God. Amen. Here yeah, we're talking about Jesus the, ser the servant. So preserve me, O God, for in thee I put my trust. So here, Jesus the servant, the man, was putting all his trust in God. Verse 2, O oh my soul, thou hast said unto the Lord, Thou art my Lord, my goodness extendeth not to thee, but to the sins that are in the earth, and the ex excellent in whom is all my delight. The sorrows shall be multiplied that hasten after another God. The drink offerings of blood will I not offer, nor take up the names into my lips. So here is the consecration of the Son of God, the servant of God, to God himself. He's saying, you know, um, 
my soul has said unto you, you are my Lord. And then in verse 3, or oh, verse 4, he says, you know, people's problems are going to multiply and uh, multiply, they're going to be multiplied and people are serving idols and, you know, doing all sorts of sacrifices. But he was not going to do that, neither even put the names of idols on his mouth. Amen. But again also, though David is singing it, David himself is being used and it's the spirit of Christ which is speaking in him. Just the foundation as we, we go and you're going to see that it's, it will become very clear. Verse 5. The Lord is my portion. Is the portion of my inheritance. And of my cup thou maintainest my lot. The lines are fallen unto me in the pleasant places. Yea, I have a goodly heritage. <coughs> I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. My reins also instruct me in the night of seasons. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Amen. Brother, sister, I would like you to know, today, Jesus is our example. Everything he did, how he succeeded, if he was the redeemer, they redeemed also. For them to succeed, for them to please God, they have to walk exactly as Jesus walked. Amen. I'm just laying the foundation before we go into <coughs> verse 9. Therefore my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh also shall rest in hope. Amen. For thou will not leave my soul in hell. Neither will thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Now wouldn't it be madness for somebody who was there listening to David playing, even when I die, my body is going to rest in peace. And even when I die, my body is not going to see corruption. Somebody said, this man is just crazy. But it was not David. It was the spirit of Christ in him. Speaking about the resurrection and how that Jesus was not going to rot. But of course his body had to be brought out of the grave. Why? Because he, he had life eternal. And he was also in a way the author of life. Six, uh, in chapter 16. Yeah, sorry. What's that? And then of course he comes to 11. Thou will show me the path of life. Brother, sister, even Jesus as a man, he had to learn the word of God. God had to show him what to do. The same also applies to you and to me. God has to teach us the way, they, they show us the path of life. Now, in the natural life when we come into this earth, there is also a path of natural life. You are born and your parents maybe tell you, like in the case of my brother, you are not just anybody. You are not a Congolese, you are Polish. Why? Because you are born in Poland. And this is your inheritance. This is what belongs to you. You know, they show you the path of life. All of us were born also in Africa, different places. They tell you, you are Yoruba. You are not so and so. No, they show you the path of this natural life. What to do, what not to do, your heritage, where you come from, and everything that belongs to you. Spiritually yours is the same. Our Lord had to learn also. Not me. The Bible says it in the book of Hebrews. If we go to the book of Hebrews, chapter 5. Book of Hebrews, 
chapter 5. And we are going to see just that way the path of life is nothing, brother, sister, but obedience to the word. Nothing else but obedience to the word. Amen. That's what it is all about. If we go to uh, what Hebrews chapter 5, let's start from verse 8. <coughs> Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. So even though Jesus was born a son of God, yes. God had to teach him also to show him the way and the path of life. And for this even to become a clear brother, we see this in the first Adam. When God created this man, he adopted him and Adam became a son of God by creation. Then God had to teach him the path of life. Amen. Adam, you can eat of all the trees of the garden. But the tree of good and evil, the tree of death, which is in the midst of the garden, thou shalt not eat. Because the day on which you eat it, you are going to die. From the time you eat it, it means you are now walking in the path of death. You are going to die. And brother and sister, as long as Adam obeyed the word of God, he was walking in the path of life. Amen. He had life eternal. And brother and sister, as we say, the path of life is nothing but obedience to the word of God. Amen. In our first natural life, we were disconnected from God. This is why God allowed it all. We were taught different traditions. This is why, brother and sister, you who are born in Africa and those who are born here, there is no tradition which is above the other. For the Indian, the red Indian in America, painting the face is a way of life. <coughs> For a white person here, maybe in England, it's going to be, you know, going to be considered as crazy. But also even here they have their own traditions. All traditions are vain and nothing Amen. before God. Amen. What is only valid before God is the word of God. Amen. So man in his traditions, the first natural life, we were shown also the path seemingly called the path of life. And this is what, as I was saying to the children, this is especially like today. Oh, education is the answer. Go, do. Yes, in the natural brother, let's go to school. Let us study. Let's do things. There's nothing wrong. But we know the answer is not education. The answer is the word of God. That's the answer. Without the word of God, brother, you are born a woman. Are you truly a woman? You are born a man. Are you truly a man? Because what God considers as a man, you have to be a man according to God's word. Amen. What God considers a woman, you have to be a woman according to God's word. If you are not according to God, you are not a woman. Amen. You are not a man. Amen. Amen. By tradition, by, you know, the first birth, just like Adam, we were lost, we were born in sin, and we were shown, brother and sister, the path of death. That's the path of death. Amen. Traditions. Mm -hmm. And this is why, brother and sister, many of these traditions, in fact all of them, are demonic. Mm -hmm. You take cultures in Africa. Mm -hmm. A young girl has to, to, first of all, sleep with an uncle. Nigeria. I was I only mentioned it, brother Simeon around me said, brother, it happened to a family member. He only spoke to me about two, uh, two, two days ago. When you're married, the husband dies. 
Now they have to bathe the corpse of the husband. They wash his, uh, his body and they collect the water. They tell you, the woman, for you not to be free and get married to another man, this is a tradition. Drink a cup of this water, then you are free. That's demonic. According to God's word, marriage is only when the man is alive. But when, as soon as the man dies, listen, brother, as soon as he dies, a second later, you are free to get married again if you want to. But as Paul advised, but he has to be in the law. But yet in the Congo, it's another tradition. There are some tribes there, a lady is married, the husband dies, come here, they have to cut your hair to signify a new beginning. Now go home, go and get married because we want to deal with the past. All these traditions are demonic because none of them considers the word of God. We were shown what? The path of death. Amen. Amen. But then God allowed it one day for us to hear the word. For us to hear that Jesus died and he took upon him the cross of humanity. And when we repented, brother, sister, we became children of God and God took the responsibility to teach us the path, the way of life. Let us go for this to become very clear. Psalm chapter 32. Psalm chapter 32. Now, in Psalm 32, it's a psalm that uh, glorifies the work of redemption and what God accomplished through Christ Jesus on the cross for all the believers. Look at verse 1 first of all. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven and whose sin is covered. Amen, amen. So a man who has come to a place where they repent of sin and God forgives them, the Bible declares that that man is blessed. Amen. Whether he's a poor or rich, he may not appear to be blessed in the eyes of the world. But according to God, that man is blessed. Amen, 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 amen. He's blessed. But there are also things we have to do to get to that. It's not my, my preaching, but we know sometimes it's just difficult to jump these things. Now, for you even to get to the level where you want to be forgiven, brother, sin has to torment you. Sin has to torment you. Amen. And how will sin to torment you? You have to hear the word, and the word reveals to you that what you are doing is against God's word. Amen. And then it will begin to torment you. As we read here, we read it here, verse 3. Verse 3 of Psalm 32. When I kept silent, my bones waxed old through my roaring all day long. Now here, David is also referring to his own sin with Bathsheba that led to his repentance in, in uh, Psalm 51. But here, he had committed sin. And we can see what he's saying here. When I kept silent, even though I was not, you know, carrying on, but in his heart, he was very much condemned. Very much condemned. And he didn't have any peace. And we know that is true also today, brother. If you are a child of God, born again, you cannot sin and go. You come and hear the word, you go to sleep like a baby. If it happens, there is something wrong with you. Amen. After you hear the word, the word reveals to you what you are doing is wrong. You are going to lose your peace. You are going to be praying, Lord, give me the grace. Amen. You know? <coughs> and then, so verse 3, uh, 32, verse 3, yeah. So, when I kept silent uh, all day long. Ah, verse 4, for day and night, thy hand was heavy upon me, 
my moisture is turned into drought of summer sila. So this is actually because, brother, when you sin, God cannot bless you in that condition. And as long as also you are keeping away from repentance, it's going to be a moment of torment for you. But look at verse 5, and this speaks about the confession. I acknowledge my sin unto thee, and mine iniquity have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgression unto the Lord, and thou forgettest the iniquity of my sin, Sila. When a believer now opens his heart, confesses his sins, but please with this also comes the book of Proverbs, whoever confesses his sins and abandons them, obtains a mercy. Amen. See, when you confess your sins, then brother, sister, God guarantees you what? Forgiveness of your sins. But let's jump to verse 7. Now what happens after God forgives you of your sins? Will he just let you continue in your life? No. Let's look at verse 7. Thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass me about with sons of deliverance. The person who has been forgiven now learns that God has become his fortress, a place of refuge, a place where he can go to hide. And as long as he does that also, the Lord will guarantee him what? Deliverance. Many of us, brother, you are falling over and over in the same thing. Check the way you repented. If you repent, you abandon. Now take your refuge in the word of God. As you take your refuge in the word of God, brother, you are going to see that even your deliverance becomes very clear. Amen. As I said before, if your temptation was alcohol, brother, the Lord has delivered me. But you keep on walking with friends who are drinking, you are going to fall. Amen. Listen, brother, we don't play with sin. The man of God, William Branham, said, I've been filled with the Holy Ghost 48 years. I'm quoting his word. Since I received the Holy Ghost, 48 years. But he says, whenever I go on the streets, I see women dressed badly. I keep a cross in my car. I turn away and look at the cross to remind me exactly what the Lord did for me. And he says, you sons of God, turn your head away. Because you can fall. Think about it. If a man was filled with the Holy Ghost, has to turn his head away, not to fall. What about you if you don't have the Holy Spirit? You are going to have all sorts of ideas. And the idea of a foolishness is, or the idea of abomination is already seen before God. Here I'm talking about things that you are imagining and you're opening your mind to willingly. See? So, after this, look what will happen. Verse 8. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. And I will guide thee with mine eye. After God forgives you, you repent of your sin, what will he do? He will teach you the way of life. He will guide you, as he said it here. I will instruct you in the way that you should go. If you used to commit adultery, to you adultery was a source of fun. Maybe sexual immorality was for you. You know, that's life, like many people are saying today, oh, this is life. But then after your repentance, your forgiveness, God begins to show you the dangers of all these things. You are delivered from the path of darkness. You are placed in the path of life. And now these things can lead you back if you disobey to the path of death. This is why in Ephesians chapter 5, Paul is saying, exhorting the Ephesians, he says, listen, mortify your members. 
there is members that used to love fornication, said, said listen, listen, brother, you die in Christ. Because of, if you go back to those things, that's the reason why the anger of God can come and fall back on the rebellious. This is why, brother and sister, God will take his own time to teach you. To teach you to respect your own body. Sometimes people say, oh brother, you don't, you don't respect me. But many times you have to respect yourself first of all. Before somebody else does respect you. How can a father, even children, now we know this is a commandment, however your father is a drunkard or poor, rich. For those who believe, respect your parents. But then again, there are those in the world, they want children to respect them when they themselves resp disrespect themselves Amen. before the children. It's wrong. So here, God is saying, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way we thou shalt go, and I will guide thee. Now, an advice here from God as well. Verse 9. Be ye not as a horse or as a mule which have no understanding, whose mouth must be held with bits and bridle, lest they come near unto thee. God is saying, listen, I will instruct you, I will show you where to put your feet, where not to go. And don't be like a mule or a horse. Where I have to put things in your mouth and pull you a horse. Brother, sister, it's a path of obedience. It's a path of love. When we learn the word of God and develop love for God, and develop even knowledge that, brother, the commandments of God, first of all, are good for ourselves. Amen. For ourselves. Today, many, many people are in trouble. But when the trouble started long ago, breaking God's commandments. Not today, brother, in our society. Why cannot some women stay in marriage? Why? Because they started it early. And over there, they've been with John, they've been with so-and-so, they've been with so-and-so. And this now, it becomes a problem. Even when they're in marriage, it's a problem for them. Brother, sister, but we trust that if we truly found forgiveness with God, there comes also with a deliverance Amen. from all the spirits of the past. Amen. So that whoever, what you were unable to do, now you can do with God's grace. Amen. The path of life. So don't be like a mule. This is why, brother, sister, for some people, oh, sometimes God can push a believer. But don't always rely on that. That's not really God's will. God's will is that you may develop the love for his word. Amen. You yourself willingly choosing what's right and running away from what's wrong. Amen. But sometimes when we are stupid, God can really pull you out of a situation. But his, his will is that you may learn to love him Amen. and do things through love by obedience to the word of God. And then he shows us here that when we rebel, we want to do our own way, we want to walk in our own path rather than the path of life, we are going to have a lot of troubles Amen. and sorrows. This is what follows. Verse 10. Many sorrows shall be to the wicked, but he that trusteth in the Lord, mercy shall encompass him about. Hallelujah. Don't ever think, brother, even today, each one of us knows there is no, there's no person, including preachers, all of us. You know where you disobeyed. You know also the price you paid or the price you are still paying. Amen. And how many times that you can even be in the toilet to think, Lord, how stupid was I? Mm -hmm. Why did I keep your word? 
Just to show you, brother, when you keep God's word, the blessing will follow you. Amen. And the Bible says, the blessing of the Lord maketh rich and is not followed with sorrow. Amen, amen, amen. Many times, you are a believer, you hear the word of God, you jump in the wrong marriage. Brother, you will be crying over there. Ah, if I had really listened, but it's too late. Stick with it. Brother, pray for me. Many times you do the praying yourself. Because it's a matter of your choice. <laughs> it's true. It's true. When you disobey, brother, sister, you choose your own will. And this is the whole deal. The first Adam was uh, having life eternal. The Lord was leading him in the way of life. Don't eat the other because the day on which you are going to eat it. That means you are on the way of life, you are going to the way of death. You are going to die. And brother, sister, it was a tragedy. Adam was a king who could call crocodile. A fancy taking a tour in the river. Come here, you, two crocodiles. Adam could stand on two crocodiles like this. They swim along the river and it's like that. He didn't need a boat. He was the king of the earth. But suddenly after sea, he goes to the river to get water. Even a croc wants to grab him. <laughs> Even a lion wants to eat him. So you can imagine how difficult it was for our brother Adam. But that was the reality of the way of disobedience. It's the same when a believer chooses to disobey. Brother, sister, you'll regret your life. I'm telling you the truth. Now, brother, cousin, you were telling us, many times they receive call, brother, come to hospital, I'm so and so, because they have huge assemblies of 8,000 8, people, sometimes even with the name, you don't know who it is. And then they go to hospital, ah, I remember seeing your face, ah, brother. So, yes, you want us to pray here, what, what is it? Brother, I was, uh, to be quite honest, brother, I've got AIDS. Oh, how did you get it, brother? Uh, brother was a hypocrite. I used to come, but I used to visit prostitutes as well. And, and the brother actually had to say, you know what? We are going to pray the Lord for his mercy to heal you, but to be ready to die. <laughs> because many times when things get to that place, it's a punishment. It's a punishment. The Lord stopped you stopped you and stopped you again but you continued in stubbornness and now the Lord will open it okay you just go now you may still be saved because you repented of your sin but you are not going to make it in the rapture why because as by salvation we are saved by grace but for our rapture the pleasure of the Lord has to rest upon us to be like Enoch where God says actually, I am pleased with you. Amen. But how is he going to please with you, to be pleased with you if you obey the word of God? Amen. As a consequence, people die. Because they choose to walk in the way of rebellion, the way of death. But the way of life, brother and sister, is a fruit obedience to the word. So many sorrows shall be to the wicked, but he that trusteth in the Lord, mercy shall encompass him about. And this brings to mind also Psalm chapter 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He leads me to green pastures. Amen. He leads me beside the still waters. Brother, what does a sheep want? The grass and the water. As you are eating green pasture, you are drinking the water, you prosper. You grow up. And that's the picture of a believer. But brother, sister, learn. You have to be happy in these things. You have to like these things. God will never force a believer to keep his word. Amen. 
the believer has to develop and learn that the word of God is good for me. Amen. And you do the choosing for yourself. Amen. Like Adam had to learn that, brother, I know the best thing for me is not to eat from the tree of uh, good and evil. <laughs> Why? Because God means what he says. And he says what he means. Even today, you and me. In what path are you walking? Are you in the path of life? If you're in the path of life, don't you know First Corinthians says? Witchcraft, fornication, and all these things, including the, the works of the flesh and Galatians. Paul says, I told you, and I tell you also, all those who practice these things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Practice, which means it's your life. That's what you do. That's your habit. It will not. If a believer does that, he will not prosper. So, brother and sister, Jesus is our model in following this way of life. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 12 and let's see exactly Hebrews 12. Remember, when we read the path of life, thou will show me the path of life. What followed was, in your presence, there is, let me check it again, sorry. <laughs> in your presence uh, was some chapter, because I forgot what was behind them. Psalm 16. Yeah, thou will show me the path of life, in thy presence is fullness. Of joy. At the right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. For some brother, sister, before we read uh, uh, Hebrews 12, they think God's word is there to rob us of some pleasures that we want. No, on the contrary, God wants to give you real pleasures. Amen. Real joy. He knows that the joy of sin, the brother, is short lived. Ephemeral. Ephemeral. It's a terrible thing, but you know, sometimes because of mix, uh, the mixed assembly, sometimes you cannot say certain, you know, because of the respect that we have. But I, I read this in a newspaper. A newspaper. Because these days, you can walk around, even if you're not married. As a man, you can go to, as they say, it, uh, you know, sex shops, and you buy toys to satisfy yourself. You can buy, you know, that of a woman, you can buy that of a man. Now, this is an unbeliever writing on a newspaper and is campaigning to close all these things. An unbeliever. He said, Oh, these things are just destroying people. And he collected evidence also from the people. And brother and sister, Satan's ways are perversion. Amen. People think of oh, in doing so. And then even in married life, there are people who say, why not we can do that? Then you find yourself, it's better to be with your toy than to be with your wife. <laughs> do not take shortcuts and accept things that come from demons. Brother, keep the word of God. The Lord is going to bless you. Amen. Amen. Just keep the word of God. God wants to give us real pleasures. And I can tell you, brother, there is real pleasure in obeying God's word. Amen. We did experience. We were all, all that. Brother, there were times you rebel a bit. Then you make your effort. You go to the assembly. You sit down. The preaching is going on. And for those brothers whose rights are whose hearts are right, oh my God, hallelujah! Hey, they are rejoicing. But you are just there, miserable. Why? Condemned. Yes, sir. Amen, 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 amen. But when you are free, brother, you can rejoice in the word of God. Sometimes you are singing, tears are just coming down. So oh, praise amen. the Lord. There's real joy. In obeying the word. 
He said to do lies to us. Mm -hmm. This over here. This one, but all these things, they only bring sorrow. They only bring the torment and pain. But when we obey, brother, there comes a joy also. Not only a joy here on earth, but even when you cross over, there's even abundance joy waiting for you. Amen. And in Hebrews 12, the Bible says this. For all of us uh, who have uh, actually started to follow the Lord. Wherefore, seeing we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay every weight and the sin which so easily beset us, let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Now, Paul says we have a cloud of witnesses. And these cloud of witnesses are none other but the saints also who have gone before us, who obeyed the word of God, they did the will of God, and they are there also waiting for us. They can even testify. If it was possible, David could actually come this morning to rest. Say, brother, keep the word. I know the agony I went through when, when I, I, I took Bathsheba. I know the agony. Sin is not to play with. He can testify to that. Every one of them, Adam could say the same thing. Brothers in Leicester, I advise you, keep the word. I disobeyed, took the, the path of sin, the path of death. You don't know how I regret it. You don't know what, you know, the, 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 the glory we lost. Everyone can say the same thing. And here Paul is exhorting us, say, the cloud of witness is there, but you too now, we have to run the race that is set before us. But how are we going to run it? With disobedience? No. Separate yourself from the sin that easily takes you. So that you may be free to run the race. For some it can be proud. For some it can just be, I cannot tolerate somebody to speak me two words. I have to ask about it. Learn, brother, to, to humble yourself. Because the Lord we are following, as an example, in the book of Peter said, he was insulted, but never insulted back. Amen. He was the perfect example of humility. Amen. And there are those who get, no, 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 I can't. <laughs> for you to be happy, for you to be blessed, learn the example from Jesus. Amen. And now, verse 2, after all this, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. So Jesus is the author, he's also the finisher. Not only the author and the finisher, he is himself the very example of every believer. So every believer has to look to him. Yes, brother, sister, we can learn from maybe William Brown, we can learn from so and so, but our example by excellence is not a man, it's the Lord Jesus himself. Hallelujah. Now, this Jesus, as we are looking unto him, who for the joy that was set before him and do it, the cross, despising the shame, and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For him, brother, sister, to endure the cross, he knew there was a joy also waiting for him. He knew I had to pay the price. Then I'm going to, to get to that joy. Same thing with you today. We have to pay the price. We have to follow our Lord Jesus. He's the example by nature. And brother, I was trying to exhort one brother, say, listen, even if you know this brother is weak, is living wrong, don't feel superior. When you are together, one of the things I was following the testimonies amen, amen, amen. of the people, brother Branham was weak, <coughs> They said what attracted everybody to him was his humility. Mm -hmm. 
Even though he had the gift of discernment, many times he could see what these brothers were doing, that you are a hypocrite. But he would just be in front of you and call you my precious brother. He knows you are a hypocrite. You are do, living a double lives. But he's not going to say, you, a hypocrite, me? I, you know, you expert. No. He calls you even my precious brother, can't you? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Isn't it the example of Jesus? Amen. Jesus knew that Judas, you know, but he called him friend. Come, come and kiss me and do what you have to do. Friend. If it's to you and me, <laughs> you, 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 you call, you call myself, and you call him yourself a disciple of Jesus? Brother, that's carnality. Amen, amen, amen. The level where we have to get to, I tell you, you have to die to yourself. Amen. And all these people are saying, even William Brown in his presence, he will feel you, he will feel, he will let you feel as if you are the greatest. But you yourself, you don't know. I think you are. But he is going to let you know. And one that struck me, he was invited into a house before a meeting, and the sister cooked and all that. And then they ate, served. And then after eating, Brother Brown said, Oh, you know what? May the Lord bless you, my sister. I've eaten very well. I could, I could, this actually, if I had gone to a restaurant, I would have paid a lot, a lot more. But may the Lord bless you. And the sister said, oh, brother, you know, praise the Lord. And said, oh, and in fact, he, he praised her as well. You are a fine woman of God. <coughs> oh, my God. And they said, sister said, no, no, brother, brother, mom. Many times even I doubt whether I'm saved or, or, or not. And brother, brother told her, my sister, my precious sister, let me tell you. Uh, yeah, sorry, the sister said, many times I feel as if I'm not even saved, so I feel. And Brother Bram said, you know, my sister, let me tell you, 75% of the time I feel that I'm not saved. Mm -hmm. huh? But it's not your feeling, it's your faith ah. in Amen. what he did Amen. for you. Amen. Amen. It's not your feeling, it's what he did for you. Amen. Amen. It's the faith. So 75% I feel I'm not saved. I feel, I feel in this body, I'm not saved. I feel, but... By faith, I have to believe in what he did for me. Amen. Amen. And the sister thought, oh my God, if Brother Brown can feel like that, then, you know, she had the courage. Brother Jesus, for the joy that was set before him, everything you suffer here for the word, you are going to get the record. Amen. Everything. Brother, I'm trying to do my good. Even my husband. I'm sorry. Now, brother, if I was in the world, divorce, it's over. But, you know, I'm a woman of God. The Bible just tells me to love him. My sister, let me exhort you. Do it with joy. Amen. Do it with joy. Even when your husband is an unbeliever, do it even twice as much. Amen. Because there were sisters asking, brother, 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 my husband is an unbeliever, according to the word of God. Now, I want to go to church. Hey, hey, now, what do, you, do you want me to divorce him? Say, no. The best you can do, be a wife. So that even he, the unbeliever may know, in the world I can never find a, I can never find a woman like this. <laughs> and he's going to trust you more. And that can even lead to him being saved. Amen. Amen. That is absolutely true. This is what the Bible says, brother, sister. Whatever you do, do it as unto the Lord. Amen. You are not doing it to somebody. No. Not to a brother. Not to a sister. You are doing it Amen. to the Lord. Amen. Amen. To the Lord. Amen. As you are there, cooking for your husband, serving her, serving him. Do it, brother, as if you are serving Jesus at home. Amen. You too, brother, love your wife as if it's Jesus who was loving that home. Amen. Then the mistakes, the many mistakes are going to disappear. You call yourself a woman? I wish even I met somebody else. There are people who are harsh like that. Oh, brother, we better tell the truth. Better tell the truth. Listen, brother. 
Sometimes even with truth, but be wise with your truth. Yes, the only thing that we should not kind of uh, mix to be, is when it comes to the preaching of the word in the church. Then we should not manage or decorate or try to dilute the truth. Mm -hmm. Say the truth as it is. Amen. But in our rapport with each other, even when you stole 20 pounds from me, I know you stole it. I shouldn't be calling you. You are a thief. No. It won't minister grace. May the Lord help us. Amen. 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 Maturity. I think I gave this example, and it's very few who can do that. In Angola, one brother slept with a preacher's wife. And the preacher was not there. And he was just returning to find the many things, you know, piled outside. So, what's all this? And the wife was just crying, waiting for him. He said, I don't know. I truly don't know what to, how, I don't know. Brother so and so came here, you were not here, and I don't know, you know. And up to now, I feel even like beating myself. Why did I do this? Brother what? Brother so and so. Okay. Of course, as a man, the first reaction was anger. He said, that's why I put my stuff there. I know that you're just going to cast me out. I'm not even worthy for you to call me wife. Just, you know, but I regret. I don't know even what to do. But everything is in your hand. And I cannot also keep this because from the time on, I'm just as miserable as I have not even slept for two days. I'm wondering... How it even got to that? And the brother just said, put your stuff back. <laughs> I've forgiven you. And then he went to see the brother. He said, brother, the brother was just trying to say, please, I just want to speak to you. Don't worry about it. Did you truly do that? Say, brother, I'm regretting, yes, that's what I did. Say, brother, I want you to know, as much as it pain in me, I believe in forgiveness. I forgive you in Jesus' name. Amen. Then the brother continued to preach. For two weeks, the other brother who had fallen into sin was not coming. He followed him again. He said, brother, don't be ashamed. That's your church. Go back. If it's that thing stopping you from coming, I want you to know the word of God will be continued to be preached. But even when you hear me hammer on adultery, I'm not referring to you. I'm referring on the word of, uh, to the word of Amen. God. Because, you know, the word of God is there to help everybody. Return to the church. And I can tell you, for some, who, who you call a brother? That unbeliever? Let him go! That's a bad reaction. Many times we don't act like believers. We act like unbelievers. Amen. Amen. The man of God, Brother Frank, in marriage, ancient problem, say many times, those who require forgiveness from people. No, I'm not going to do it until it depends. So many times they themselves are wrong. Because they don't know is the spirit of God that pushes people to repentance. Amen. Amen. I can force you. You can even come to the front church of Leicester. Forgive me. It's not coming from your heart. You are not even convicted. You don't feel the soul. That is only like uh, a maquillage or makeup. Because it's not coming from the depth of your heart, brother, it's not even a forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And this is why may the Lord truly help us in our characters. We know whatever we do, we do it unto the Lord. Amen. 
And if we do it unto the Lord, brother, sister, why are we doing it? Because we know there is also a joy waiting for us. Amen. Everything we do for the kingdom, the Lord is going to recompense us. Amen. He will. If he said the glass of water will receive a recompense, how much more the pain you suffer? Your own rights that you abandon. I could, by right, okay, if a woman, a wife does that, by right, the husband has got the right to cast her out. By right. But also, as a Christian, you are redemption to marriage ancient problem. Brother Frank speaks about all this and said, even the adulterous woman, Jesus forgave her. Now, who are you not to forgive? The path of life. By obedience. And it requires us, brother, to do what? To die to our own will. The first Adam abandoned the path of life to go in the path of death by his own will. He wanted to do his will and not the will of God. And we were born separated from God, doing our own will. But now, the Lord has called you, has called me. We repented, we came to him. Now he's teaching you in the way of life, brother. What is only going to be recompensed? Or what is going to work? If you abandon your own will and do the will of God. Then you are walking in the way of life. The way of uh, obedience. Let us also look at Deuteronomy chapter 30. Deuteronomy chapter 30. Just going towards the conclusion now. Deuteronomy 30. Now, our example is just like the children of Israel too. God, listen brother, when they were in Egypt, because, though they were living in Goshen, because there was no prophet for a good, almost 400 years, the children of Israel really got mixed up with the Egyptians. Mm -hmm. They were worshipping certain gods of Egypt. Mm -hmm. This is why even later on, when they made the golden calf, they said, as we saw it in Egypt. They were doing things completely mixed up, like the Egyptians. But then God sent the prophet, according to his uh, a promise, brought them out. And now God started teaching them the path of life. The many things he was showing them. When you go into the country, where I'm bringing you, learn not the ways of the nations. They look at the sun and they tremble. They look at the moon and they begin to worship. But you, when you see all those things, you recognize that I am the Lord that made them. Amen. And also, the way of life. Don't get married to the people there. Because they worship idols, they're going to corrupt you. Don't give your sons. Or don't get daughters, uh, the wives or your sons. And also, don't uh, give your daughters to them. Why? Because they are going to corrupt them. All these were the ways of life. The ways and the path of life. But you know, all those were rebelling. God was punishing. All those who obeyed, God blessed them. And here to sum it up in chapter 30, let's look at verse 15. See, I'll set before thee this day life and good and death and evil. In that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgment that thou, that, that thou mayest live and multiply 
and the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess it. 17. But if thine heart turn away, so that thou wilt not hear, but shall be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, I denounce unto you this day that you shall surely perish and that ye shall not prolong your days upon the land whither thou passest over the Jordan to go and possess it. And then God did something else. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I've set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. Amen. That thou mayest love the Lord. Now, what is love? Life is actually explaining it here. That thou mayest love the Lord thy God. And thou mayest obey his voice. And that thou mayest cleave unto him. For he is thy life. And the length of thy days that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob, to give them. So, brother and sister, the path of life, God said to Israel, I've placed all these things before you, my commandments. Now, life, if you obey them, if you walk in, in them, you do what I commanded you. Death, if you choose to do the contrary, and even today, brother and sister, our rapture is going to depend on it. What you choose to do, with every word you are hearing, if you choose rebellion, okay, go on, brother, no problem, but you are not going to make it in the rapture. Obedience is going to make it because it's the only way we will arrive to maturity. Our maturity means to be like Jesus Christ. Because there are many believers in this uh, uh, mention of Yahweh, they are thinking maturity is to spend many years in the message. Brother have been in the message for 45 years and still acting like a baby. Maturity is to be like Jesus. A believer of six months, brother, can attain maturity. When you are 40 years, you are still a baby in the faith. Depends on the attitude of your heart. And how you are embracing the word of God. See, somebody believed two months ago is already baptized with the Holy Spirit. You who, who believed 30 years ago, you are still struggling and falling and so forth. Maturity is to be like the Lord. Amen. In this path of life, we want to walk in his ways. We want the word of God to be our joy. And we are also learning, brother, the word of God is first good for ourselves. Amen. Ourselves. There are normally people pay the price twice. Twice. <coughs> like when I was in Africa after believing the word of God, many times you hear stories. You look at people who are crazy in the street, picking stiff, you know, stuff. Sometimes even naked. You're like, what did they do? No, no, no. What rendered them like this? They went to a witch doctor. They wanted to become like one that was very close to us. His name was Randall. Randall. He was actually a headmaster in a school. But he was all playing a guitar. So he went to see a witch doctor. He wanted to become the famous musician in Congo. And then, of course, the demons invaded him. And, uh, you know, he went crazy. One time, because every time he would just do, do stop, he would stop. Hey! You know, and scream to people. So one time, he came to me asking me for food. And I had the bread with me. I said, please, tell me first. Why do you, when you walk to, you stand and you yell? Why do you do that? He said, there are two, sometimes even a group of people following me, tormenting me. Whenever I want to do it, they are pulling my clothes, everything. Then I have to stop and, you know, kind of a... You know, tell them to, to back off. So it's a demons. Then I was just thinking, oh Lord, 
such a person, look at how Satan fooled him. He goes, now his life is miserable, he's crazy, picking stuff from there, and now when you die, you go to hell. Oh my God! I nearly cried. Say, Lord, if this is the thing, I rather, if it's my choosing, I do not want to be born in this world. You come just to be lost, your life is messed, and then you die, you go to hell. Ah, oh, Lord, right, please. So we better thank God for the way. Better thank God for salvation. Amen. Better thank God for even the grace you receive to come to know Amen. this Jesus and what he did for you. Amen. Because many people are hearing it. It means nothing. Yeah. But if it means something to you, keep on walking, embrace the way of life, and the Lord is going to bless you. Amen. May the Lord bless us. Amen. Let's sing. I don't know if we know the song. Sing over to me. Wonderful words of life. 